I'm not going to talk about China going global. You'll have to wait five minutes. I'm old school, so there's no PowerPoint. We're, we're studying, um, we're, we have a, a three-year project, which is about half elapsed. So we'll soon have some things to put, to draft work to put on websites. There are 19 of us in our project, and we're studying the political and policy processes that have led four governments in uh, the last uh, 10 or so years to intensify efforts to tackle poverty and inequality. The four governments are in Brazil, India, China, and South Africa. Now we ask why governments, and more specifically why uh, key actors within governments adopt initiatives to tackle poverty and inequality. Uh, in short, and putting it very crudely, the answer is in India and Brazil, they do it for votes. And in uh, China, they don't need votes. And in South Africa, the ANC doesn't yet need votes or think it needs votes. So they, in China and South Africa, they mainly tackle poverty and inequality to reduce protest, disorder, and instability, which is reaching substantially uh, worrying proportions for governments. One, over 100,000 collective protests in China last year, for example. We exa China spends more money on coercive mechanisms to deal with internal instability than it spends on defense. So it's quite worried about internal instability and poverty reduction, inequality reduction is another way to tackle that uh, problem. We examine the relationship between the increasing government revenues, which have come with economic growth, They've increased to different degrees in the four countries, but they've increased everywhere. The relationship between increasing revenues and um, uh, the new initiatives which governments undertake spending those revenues. We also consider uh, the political and policy inheritances from the recent past, which each of these governments uh, has to deal with. It shapes what they do now. And we find many, in many cases that um, they break out of uh, path dependency, old practices, and innovate. So I think it's possible, Khalid, for you to add our project to the uh, innovating studies list. Um, we find quite a lot of innovation in China, India, and South Africa. Less innovation in Brazil because uh, in Brazil, earlier governments tackled poverty and, and especially inequality before this began to happen on a big scale in India, China, and South Africa. But in most cases, what we're finding is that political agency, the actions of politicians and of uh, bureaucrats in some cases, uh, agency for political innovation and policy innovation, uh, this counts for much more in these cases than the literature might suggest. In each of the four countries, we study four to five policy initiatives, uh, new, new programs, um, and we study the degree to which they vary within countries, and also the degree to which new initiatives for, for poverty and inequality reduction uh, vary between countries. How they vary in their origins, in their aims, and in their impact. Uh, we find that uh, it, we find it quite useful to focus on policy, policy communities, so-called, that is, on the totality of groups and actors uh, that influence the formulation and implementation of policy. So the policy and the policy communities vary a lot from country to country uh, in their composition. The Chinese uh, system is much more closed. The policy committee community is therefore somewhat more limited. But in other cases, we, we examine the roles played by think tanks, by organized interests, by civil society organizations, sometimes by the courts, etc. Uh, each of our four country teams has got as a member uh, what we call a scholar practitioner. That is a person in the, the country being studied who is, uh, a, is now or recently has been a practitioner of sorts, an actor in the policy community, usually a rather formidable actor in the policy community, but who was also a person with an, an academic analytical capacity. 
uh, and uh, th therefore, in a sense, they're, they're, uh, they can wear two hats. Uh, and they help us uh, to keep a grip on uh, things uh, and keep in touch with the real world. Uh, and also, uh, they are immensely helpful in terms of contributing insights. Despite the variations that we find across these four very different cases, we do find that they add up to an important trend a greater attention to tackling poverty and inequality, greater commitment uh, to social programs, uh, we find that they add up to a common trend which offers a striking contrast to the West and Japan where social programs and social protection has been slashed and will continue to be slashed. <laughs>